a very pleasant morning to all i am glad to inform that phoenix literary association of the department of english emg yadava women's college organizes a webinar on chiseled poems from creative pens we shall start the program with the blessings of almighty now prayer song I am delighted to call upon Mrs. S. Muthulakshmi, ma'am, to welcome the all gathering. It is indeed a honor to deliver a welcome address on behalf of the Phoenix Literary Association of uh, English Department. At this moment, I acknowledge the support rendered to the department by the secretary and correspondent, Trimadi EMGS Indrani Amma, for, uh, for her uh, support towards the department. And I, I also uh, acknowledge the support uh, by three EMGS Bhoti Raja sir and our governing council members, three EMGS Bhoti Kopala Krishna sir and three EMGS Arun Bhoti sir. I owe our respect to our principal, Dr. Mrs. V. Puspalada ma'am for, for her guidance and motivation to bring new initiatives on campus. I must especially mention our head of the department, Mrs. S. Rahama Sundari ma'am, who is behind us and shows us the way towards excellence. I record my respect to our academic folks, our director ma'am, Mrs. R. Divya ma'am, uh, our administrative officer, Mr. V.M. Sundarajan sir, our dean of academic affairs, Dr. Indra Rani ma'am, and our controller of examination, uh, Mrs. C. Kamala ma'am. And now I am very overwhelmed to welcome today's resource person, Dr. B. P. Ravi ma'am, assistant professor of English and at Thirumala Nayakar College, so for ten numbers, Madurai. Welcome, ma'am. Uh, I thank you for accepting our invitation in your busy schedule. The poem is some poem is always something very special to us. We are awaiting each short friend by a sister poems. And I also welcome the faculty members of the department who are always committed in their work and are um, energetic students of our department. I welcome all of you to this webinar. Thank you. I now I request Dr. It's my pleasure and privilege to introduce Dr. V. P. Radhi. I'm really glad that we do have a cordial relationship since 15 years. She has uh, uh, the touch of literature always. So she is very simple, humble, pious, very witty, and a down-to-earth person. Okay, there are uh, many adjectives, adjectives that would uh, suit her. 
uh, I'm immensely pleased to share her profile, which is quite a lengthy one. Okay. <laughs> Dr. V.P. Radhi, born as the ch third child of generous couple Mrs. Uh, v. Uh, Jayalakshmi and Mr. V. Uh, Veera Putra Pandian and was brought up at Rajapalayan and Madurai, the temple city. She has authored Blessings, Peacocks, Peacocks and on Anthology of Poems in 2018, The Power of Mind in 2019 and The Wisdom World 20, 99 Quotes in 2019 and translations of nine divine songs in 2020. To her credit, she has published 51 articles in UGC, peer-reviewed journals, proceedings of the seminars or conference, books, scopus, web of uh, science uh, journals, etc., and contributed five uh, chapters. She has edited three books. She has presented 48 papers in state, national, and international conferences. She is a recipient of Best Paper Award, Best Teacher Award, Best Creative Writer Award. She has also contributed poems and articles in Tamil, lang uh, Tamil magazine. She has composed poems gathered and shared in all uh, poetry.com and blogger. She has received the proficiency prize in BA English Literature 2000. She has qualified set in 2012. She is a topper in history of English language and literature and um, on uh, online NPTEL uh, course in 2018. She worked as a receptionist in Apollo Speciality Hospitals, Madurai as teacher in Tagore Vidyalaya Matriculation School, as lecturer in Madura College, and presently she is working as assistant professor of English in Manna Thirmanai Nayakar College, autonomous, Pasamalai Madurai, her alma mater. She has uploaded e-contents and videos for the students' community in her YouTube channel, VP Radhi Aramugam. She has a soul-bound relationship with her teachers and students. She is good at pencil art, as a lifelong learner, she likes to motivate the young minds. Now, uh, it's your time, uh, uh, yes. our uh, eminent, uh, respected uh, chief, uh, chief guest. Please, uh, you can proceed, ma'am. Thank you for introducing me, ma'am. Very important, ma'am. Shall I share my screen, ma'am? Hey, yes, ma'am. Yes, OK. I request the participant to ping Radhi Ma'am's screen. Uh, can you view my screen, Ma'am? No, Ma'am. No, no. Wait. Uh, now can you view my screen, ma'am? Ma'am, can you view my screen? No, ma'am. I have already shared, ma'am. Wait, wait a minute. Is it working now? Yes, yes. We are able to see. Ah, okay, okay, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You shall continue, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Oh, okay. Okay. This is the topic, Chiseled Poems from Creative Pens. Before getting into the topic, I would like to thank the convener of Yadava Women's College, Mrs. S. Sivakama Sundari, Vice Principal and Head of the Department. And uh, I would like to thank Dr. Mrs. B. Pushpalata, Principal in Charge Ma'am, who has given me this opportunity to deliver uh, chiseled poems from Creative Pens webinar session. And uh, I would like to thank the organizing committee professors, Dr. Mrs. D. S. Parvin Bono Ma'am, who is also my friend, and uh, Ms. R. Hari Dharni. I would like to thank all my students who are attending this session from EMG Yodava Women's College. Shall I get into my topic? 
Yes, ma'am. Today's session is chiseled poems from creative pens. Creative writing. This is very much important at present for all the students of literature. Uh, reading a lot must make you a creative writer. First, I would like to just uh, say about my own poetry. Smiling petals of fragrant flowers list to you. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. See, look at this. The term poetry is derived from the Greek term to make. Poem, which means to make, to create. And then many poets have defined poetry. Of course, as students of literature, you all know what is poetry in the words of William Wordsworth. Poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings and that emotions recollected in tranquility. See, if you visit a beautiful place like uh, Kodaikanal or uh, Uti or foreign places, you will enjoy the natural scenery and then those scenery will be in your mind always even after you reach your home and you take rest in a separate room you will just close your you must just close your eyes and just recollect what you have seen from that place so that emotion when you recollect when your mind is in state of peace at the time poetry will be overflowing that powerful feelings will be overflowing that spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings is poetry says William Wordsworth and uh, Robert Frost the American poet who has received Pulitzer Prize for more than four times he defines poetry that poetry my poetry begins with delight and ends with wisdom he says and we could see entertainment as well as wisdom in his poems also and uh, Emily Dickinson she says that publication is the auction of mind. She says publication is the auction of mind. So when she was alive, a few poems were only published. That's why she says publication is the auction of mind. The next she says, if I read a book and it makes my body, so curled, no fire ever can warm me. I know that is poetry, she says. See, from this quotation, we can understand how she loves to read. She is a bibliophile. Then, in the words of Dylan Thomas, poetry is what makes me laugh or cry or yawn. What makes my toenails twinkle? What makes me want to do this or that or nothing? See, the Ty Dylan Thomas, the centenarian poet, he says, my poetry or poetry definition makes me laugh or cry or yawn also. Sometimes when we read, we will be sleeping, we will have hand sleep, nap. And uh, what makes my toenails twinkle? Even the toenails twinkle, he says. That much inspiration we can get when we read a few poems, says Dylan Thomas. Then Carl Sandburg, the familiar poet, American philosopher, he says, Poetry is an echo asking a shadow to dance. Poetry is an echo. It is an echo from the poet's mind. And then even the shadows dances, dance, he says. And the W. Somerset Mom, he also says, of all the genres of literature, either it is poetry, novel, drama, etc., the crown of literature is poetry, he says. This poetry, he says. And then I read from Google that poetry is the chiseled marble of language. It is a paint spattered canvas, but the poet uses words instead of paint. And the canvas is you, you readers, 
you are all the canvas poetry is chiseled marble of language it is a paint spattered just as if we have uh, spattered the colors on the canvas and the paintings how it will be very beautiful that multicolored paintings so the poet uses words instead of paint instead of painting he uses words to delineate and the canvas is you how you enjoy that's what it is in the hands of the readers this poetic line makes me to choose this topic today's topic what is the significance of reading poetry best verse arranged in best orders as you all have heard in poetry words are arranged in a best ma manner in best orders and sound and rhythm play a vital role and poetry is meant to read aloud not to read in a silent way and you must to use your voice you must listen to the poem songs whenever your teacher sings or reads in the class and you must always heed to his or her words i will give an example also and the connotation and the annotation the implied and the outward explanation first when we read a poem we must find what are all the themes used by the poet we must read we must read and read between the lines then only we can analyze the theme and what is the message what is the thought conveyed by the poet we have to guess and act according to that what makes a creative writer a creative writer uh, a creative writer must be a keen observer of the nature see even when you are uh, uh, busy when you see a little leaf dancing in front of you you must enjoy that that is the big sense you must have what is aestheticism aestheticism is appreciating the beauty of nature in tamil exactly we call murugu and the, from this term only we um, we came to know this lord uh, muruga muruga means beauty and when you utter the term murugu muruga muruga also your face also will become beautiful and that's true of course not because of religious oriented because of the word i love okay then and adversity also makes a creative writer to write poems adversity is unfortunate time for a man during the particular time or a manidanude kashta kalam da adversity and i could quote from shakespeare's play as you like it a sweet or the uses of adversity which like a toad ugly and venomous and this is of a life which exempts from public find stumps from trees books from running brooks and servants from stones and good in everything he says see um he compares adversity to a toad toad na or a black color la ulla or ther the previous stage of frog that is called toad the toad in greek mythology has a precious jewel on its forehead it has a precious jewel or alaha or a jolikira kallu irukuma see when the toad is uh, hiding in the dark place we cannot see the dark and the black color toad but we can see the precious toad on its forehead even at a long distance so when a man is in his period of adversity he will not be seen by the people when he becomes popular only he will be known by all the people in this world that's what shakespeare compares the precious jewel to this toad on which has precious uh, jewel on its forehead then he also says sweet were the uses of adversity which like a toad ugly and venomous 
and this is our life which exempts from public finds tongues from trees see when we look at the tree the tree teaches us something it has tongues not externally but we must see it internally what does the tea tree teaches us how to sacrifice fruits leaves barks even roots also then uh, shakespeare says sermons from stones see when it rains or when it is a shine uh, when it shines veil adichalo illa mala penjalo and the, the stone never moves an inch it will be remaining in the same place like that we must be very patient enough to bear any situation even in this adversity period that's what shakespeare says sermons from stones that's what the stone preaches as how to be patient and uh, we should be a lover of art and literature as you all know no. Uh, to know thyself study nature says ralph waldo emerson also he has read uh, all vedanta philosophies and uh, written this uh, beautiful line to know thyself to know about yourself you must study nature which is around you how this nature teaches us first see this when we do meditation we must uh, realize that this body okay this mental and the thought that thought process that is universe man is universe and uh, really we can correlate or connect all the heavenly bodies in the universe with our thought that's what man is universe and the universe is man this nature is the great book and nature is the great teacher and we must take a lot of examples from nature and um, we must learn a lot and we must produce many things who is a philosophical poet a philosophical poet is a poet who covers all these subjects such as ontology epistemology aesthetics metaphysics ontology means we must understand the meaning of life and the nature of being and epistemology is the theory of knowledge and knowing about the knowledge that's what epistemology then the beauty the principle and uh, appreciation of beauty of nature is what is the pics as you all know then metaphysics the first principles of things are the existence of god a philosophical poet must always have faith in god and as well as faith in himself faith 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 in god and faith 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 in yourself that's the secret of greatness you must believe the existence of god because the god in you when you invoke the god in you only you can speak or write or you can communicate or you can live in this present world so all these subjects a philosophical poet must cover Uh, this is what who is a philosophical poet and then be a poet in your life says reina maria rilk she says that uh, first i shall read a uh, uh, percy by she shelley's out to the west wind this is one of the chiseled poems uh, we have come across out to the west wind authored by the person by she shelly he says drive my dead thoughts over the universe like withered leaves to quicken a new birth and by the incantation of this verse scatter us from an unextinguished hearth ashes and sparks my words among mankind be through my lips to unawakened earth the trumpet of a prophecy oh when if winter comes can spring be far behind see are we people we all have lot of problems in this world we must drive this dead thoughts 
over the universe says percy by shelley like withered leaves the leaves which are fallen from the tree and immediately those leaves will will be quickened to have a new birth by the incantation of this verse this, this verse written by shelley scatter us from an unextinguished hearth hearth is a fireplace and it is an unextinguished hearth ashes and sparks my words among mankind such inspiration he has brought through this poetic line says shelley be through my lips to unawaken the earth this earth is sleeping so he awakens this earth this worldly people through his poetry the trumpet of a prophecy what is the trumpet of a prophecy oh wind if winter comes can spring be far behind he says this poetic line is an epitome of optimism this is a uh, uh, positive note kashta kaalam nu vanu varam podu vasantha kaalam varamala pogum adha appla alaga solirukkar if winter comes can spring be far behind see this life is uh, it has a cycle of uh, joy and sorrow and then uh, we must uh, look at this west wind as a preserver as a, and as also uh, sorry as well as a destroyer the west wind acts as a preserver as well as a destroyer so when there is destruction why not creation he says so these are all the philosophical thought explained in his poems and uh, this is also reflected in reina maria relk uh, quotes i shall read out that also spring has returned the earth is like a child that knows poems vasantha kaalam thirumbi vandiruchu okay the earth is like a child that knows poems this earth is compared to a child how the child lists like that the earth sings its poetry its own poetry and the next she also says if your daily life seems poor do not blame it blame yourself that you are not quite enough to call forth its riches for the creator there is no poverty see as being students of literature you must be creators there should be no poverty you must be a poet not only composing poems you must be a poet in your own life also whenever you see something a uh, poor which is not favorable to your um, uh, thought or conditions whatever you love you should not blame it evlo kedugalo evlo kashtam nadandalum ayyo ipdi aayirchi ipdi aayirchi appdi you should not lament over the cars you you should not blame yourself you must see yourself as a poet you must see yourself as a creator that's what i used to say uh, my own quotes the author of this life that is god has given a new page every day and you must create your own beautiful stories that is in your hands don't always find fault with the people whoever is near by you or nearer to the heart be a creator there won't be any poverty in your mind and you can solve many problems a uh, learn patience from rocks to keep away your emotional blocks and from tennyson's prologue to in memoriam see when in memory uh, sorry in memoriam was written after his friend's death lord alfred tennyson the uh, poet laureate during victorian age he has lost his uh, dear friend and after that he wrote this poem in memoriam an elegy in his prologue that is introduction he wrote this familiar line let knowledge grow from more and more to more let knowledge grow from more to more but more of reverence in us dwell that mind and soul according well may make one music as before but vast sing what 
Tennyson says here means when you gather knowledge by reading or by your own experience or by reading other uh, pieces of genres literature when knowledge grows more and more more of reference also must dwell in us nareya therinjikittom therinjikittom nu romba garvama illama namakulla romba respect adhigama aikitte irukonu we must know how to respect people you must see all the creatures equally either it is prime minister or an ant ant is also a creature how you must show respect to the ant also see when an ant bites you should not take that ant and crush it immediately most of the people are doing this i have noticed this but i won't do like that just i will take and let the ant in a separate place because ant is also a creature it lives for one and a half years an adult ant lives for one and a half years see when knowledge grow from more and more the more of reverence must dwell in us this is what we can uh, get this message from tennyson's poem in memoriam the mind and soul must act according well this physical body our mind and soul all these must be united and uh, we must do the action and this makes one music this whole life it as a uh, one music he says but vast appla arbhutamana isai malaiha irukum appadi neenga mind act sorry body and soul really united a world sanjinga na the work is that whatever the work is at your hand please concentrate on that work concentrate your mind your soul must concentrate your hand must also concentrate and act according to that says tennyson also then uh, and this is my call if you attempt to for noble venture this stress will never touch you in near future uh, i would like to explain the role of sound and rhythm look at this poetic line alexander pope the composed this poetic line and this is an extract from his uh, poem an epistle to dr abud nat epistle means letter as you all know and he has written this poem in letter form how you must read this poetic line i said to child not at the full to fame i list in numbers for the numbers came this is what how the sound and the rhythm attracts the readers i said to child not at the full to fame na oru muttalagavo oru kulandayagavo in the ulagathila popular agala I list the numbers for the numbers came. You know, the Malayalam is a kavitha. And the Malayalam is a kavitha. Then he was boasting himself uh, very much. Uh, but I love this poem very much. This particularly, these uh, poetic lines, I love it. See how he has used the syllables means as yet unstressed syllable. Yes, yeah, child, we are stressing. so stressed syllable no right unstressed a full stressed too faint like that so he has used unstressed and stressed syllables when the poet uses unstressed and stressed syllables that's what we call iambic foot and this is not only one example and he has also written so many poems with the same unstressed and syllables and stressed syllables i could quote from his own poetry be not the first sorry be not the first by whom the new are tried nor at the last to lay the old aside he says see the words in which we use it should not be too new or too old it should be moderate he says and uh, i could also remember a uh, paradise last the greatest epic which is an attempt written by uh, milton john milton Uh, he has also used iambic pentameter in all his uh, uh, poetic verses how it is see unstressed stressed syllable abhi ne use pandradhukku evlo kashtama irukku but whole poem he has used iambic pentameter 
See, look at the next one. This is a quote from his essay on criticism, Alexander Pope's poem. Words are like leaves, and where they most abound, much fruit of sense is rarely found. See, words are like leaves. See, when we communicate, when we speak, we must use only a few words. We should not always talk uh, by using much words. Your speech would be meaningless. How the words uh, must be means it must be abound. Much fruit of sense is rarely see when you just uh, uh, remove that boughs on the branches of the, the trees. You could see the fruit and the fruit of sense is rarely found which is hidden among the leaves. That's what your speech should be. That's what your words must be. Word is God and God is, God is word. Then you must use words. Uh, that fruit of sense must be found in your words. Then I could also quote from his essay on man. A familiar point. Act well your part. There all the honor lies. If you are very sincere, if you always concentrate on your duty, duty first, everything next, like that if you act well wherever you work, and you are students now, what's your duty? To study, to study, to study. So you must act on your part well and you will be respected by all the people in this world later. That's what we could guess the thought of uh, and the evol uh, sorry, evolution of thought from this uh, poetic line then hope springs eternal in the human breast says uh, Alexander Pope hope springs eternal see we must not become hopeless when we uh, fail in something uh, success is nothing but again and again failing for a lot of time and we must not lose our enthusiasm uh, from the words of uh, Winston Churchill, the former Prime Minister of England. Success is going from failure to failure without a loss of enthusiasm. Though you fail for uh, many a times, you must not uh, uh, lose your hope. You must be hopeful. You must be enthusiastic to achieve again and again. Surely, you will be a successful personality one day. That's what this is reflected in this poetic line also. Hope springs eternally. Okay. There is no end at all. It is in your mind. Whether you see an object or a person or a flower or a tree or paper or a poem, whatever it is, you just... Create that inspiration and be hopeful. Then, know then thyself, presume not God to scan. Please know about yourself, what is your duty, why you have come to this world. And at the same time, where is that God, where is that God, don't scan yourself. Then everything will be lost. We will become somewhat mechanical, like this mechanical world. Okay, don't scan to see God. Just to see the God within yourself. Then do good by stealth and bless to find it fame. This is a familiar line. Do good by stealth. Do all the good virtuous action stealthily and you will be familiar one day. Okay. And don't expect that uh, uh, popularity also. One day you will be popular. Then... Uh, Next one, spend a few hour time to read that makes you everywhere to lead. If you just spend a few hour time to read, that makes you everywhere to lead. You will guide your uh, posterity, your younger generations. And uh, I could uh, give one, uh, one example from, uh, from my own poems also, uh, The Crown of Man. 
Honored is he who wears a crown of tolerance. Heart of a real person is fearlessness. Apply truth on lips, the best lipstick in the world. Don't uh, search for uh, many lipstick companies. Apply truth on lips, that is the best lipstick in the world. And draw an eyelash of confidence around your eyes, but not any lakme. <laughs> okay? Remove the dirt of frailty. Weakness and the dirty of the remove Well dressed with an apron of honesty. You must dress, okay? With an apron, a sari or dress, okay, of honesty. Apply the powder of simplicity. Be simple, be kind. Don't apply any uh, talcum and the fragrance, but apply powder of simplicity. Build around you a castle of patience. Always. Make this environment peaceful. When your mother or your brother or your uh, friend shouts at you, just be relaxed, okay? Uh, that's what we are learning, that patience from uh, reading literature. So build around you a castle of patience. And the aura, then only all the people will love you also and let in a breeze of obeisance. Whatever the other people ask you to do, just obey their words also. Then sniff and spread everywhere an air of continence. Learn and seize the minute of affection. Shake your days, as, uh, days by meditation. Condine concentration by right concentration. Make your days full of satisfaction. Be satisfied each and every minute. Don't lament over the curse. So that your life may become adulation. Everyone will admire your life. That's what the crown of man in my, which is taken from my own blessings of peacocks. Then um, I could also quote from Pied Beauty. Pied Beauty, this is a familiar poem, chiseled poem in the hands of uh, the religious poet Gerard Manley Hopkins. Uh, who introduced uh, a new type of sonnet called uh, Kirtle Sonnet. Of course, you have studied in literature. What is a sonnet? A sonnet is a 14-line poem which expresses a single thought you have studied, which consists of uh, Octave and Sestet, a Petrarchan sonnet. Petrarch, who, who is an Italian poet, who introduced this sonnet, and this sonnet form was uh, introduced into England by Surrey, Earl of Surrey and uh, Thomas Wyatt. And that sonnet was made into different forms, Spangerian sonnet, Shakespearean sonnet, like that. Octave sister, then Shakespearean sonnet, three quadrants, and uh, three quadrants, four lines. Uh, each stanza consists of four lines and one couplet, as you all know. Whereas Gerard Manley Hopkins, he introduced a new type of uh, sonnet form that is called Kirtle Sonnet, C-U-R-T-A-L, Kirtle Sonnet, which has only 10 and a half lines, not even 11 lines, poetic lines, but has only 10 and a half lines. And uh, what is the poetic line which was uh, inspired me also, just I shall read from the sonnet. Glory be to God. For they build things, for skies of couple color as a brindled cow, for rose moles all in steeple upon trout that swim, fresh fire cow, chestnut falls, finches wings, landscape plotted and pleased, fell the fallow and plow, and all trades they adhere and tackle and trim. See, glory be to God. We must thank God for creating such a beautiful universe. All the things which are of multicolored uh, creations, even the skies, he has used plural form, skies of couple colored, like black and white of the cow, brindled cow, black and white of the sky. We could see the couple color of the sky, day and night, for rose mouths all in a stipple upon trout that swim. If you watch the fish in the sea, uh, the fish 
are the skin uh, that scales if you see which is uh, spreaded with this rose moles apra la habi anganga spread panni tholichi vitta mari as if uh, someone has uh, dappled rose moles on the body of the fish such a beautiful colorful fish we could see in the ocean red swan black uh, sword like that angel fish colorful fishes fresh fire curled chestnut falls chestnut nut a kind of nut apdi keela velumbodhu eppadi irukuma or fire fresh or fire curl apdi kangu therichcha mari veludha then finches wings finches type of bird wings also that and the fresh fire coal chestnut how beautifully he has described how uh, such a creations created in the hands of god landscape plotted and pieced beautifully we could see the pieced and plotted landscape fell the fellow and plow alaha madichu okay fellow and plow and we, have, we can also plow Uh, those lands and all trades their gear and tackle and trim they could do all sort of business in this landscape in a landscape in this globe he says and this is uh, uh, one of the chiseled points in the hands of uh, gm hopkins which i loved a lot then heard melodies or sweet but those unheard are sweeter that for oi soft pipes play on heard melodies or sweet uh, see i could uh, sing one uh, a movie song also here just one line basikonde neeram thalikum oosai basikonde neeram thalikum oosai like that and the which is so, uh, that song and the particular poetic uh, line which uh, mesmerizes the audience and the pass or a gap irukumla that pass also we love very much like that her melodies are sweet kekindra paadal alla avlo alaga inimaya irukum but you know there are poems irukku there are many poems which are unheard we have it heard or sweeter those unheard poems or much sweeter therefore o e soft pipes play on in which poetic uh, in which poem we could see this poetic line of course you all know from john keats out on a grisian urn okay see out on a grisian urn we could see uh, that and the soft pipes those musicians playing all uh, types of uh, musics always it will be heard that this what john keats wants to tell us means art is immortal art is immortal he has described another scene also oh happy 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 boughs that cannot shed your leaves not ever bid the spring adieu adieu na saying goodbye okay and happy melodies unwearied for ever piping songs for ever new all the musicians will always sing new songs that is not heard okay happy 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 boughs if you look at the real boughs the branches of the trees we could see the withered leaves fallen from the trees but this art which is drawn on that uh, grisian earth it is all it remains always happy it cannot shed its leaf that's what art is immortal the spring cannot say goodbye that's what anga vasantha kalam vandu tata kavikave kamikade that's what then in another poem beauty is truth truth beauty that is all you know on this earth and all you need to know alage unmai unmai alage that's what we must know and in his another poem john keats talks about beauty what is it means a thing of beauty is joy for ever whenever you see a beautiful object or beautiful uh, uh, things it always makes us sorry it will always make us 
a very uh, tranquility uh, see from this line also we can analyze john keats must not might not have used a thing of beauty is joy forever he might have used a think of beauty is also joy for ever நீங்க அழகுன்னு கற்பனையில நினைச்சா கூட உங்களை சுத்தி உள்ளதெல்லாம் அழகா தெரியுமா ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் ஈவன் இஃப் யூ ஸ்டாண்ட் நியர் பை அ கட்டர் ஜஸ்ட் ஒரு கட்டர் சாக்கட பக்கத்துல நின்னா கூட இஃப் யூ திங்க் அபவுட் ஏ பியூட்டிஃபுல் ரோஸ் ஓகே அண்ட் ஃப்ராக்ரன்ஸ் ஆஃப் தட் ஸ்மெல் ஃப்ரம் த ரோஸ் ஆல்சோ யூ குட் ஸ்னிஃப் ஸோ தட் பவர் ஆஃப் தாட் அண்ட் த திங்கிங் இட் இஸ் இட் இஸ் வித் இன் யூ ஓகே ஆல் பவர் இஸ் வித் இன் யூ that thought is within you okay uh, that that's what john keats says a think of beauty is joy for ever and in another uh, poetry uh, which was inspired me a lot uh, the chisel the poem my heart aches from out to a nightingale my heart aches and a drowsy numbness pains my sense as though of hamlet i had uh, emptied some dull opiate like this the poem goes on then um, he ends the first stanza like this in some melodious plot of beech and green singest of the summer in full throated ease says john keats see when john keats was composing this poetry he was sitting under a palm tree and he was listening to the song the beautiful music of the nightingale especially the palm tree the bird is hidden among the leaves he could not see the bird but he could only listen to the music uh, played by the nightingale uh, before this what happened actually uh, tom keats is the brother of john keats and he was uh, he died of consumption consumption is nothing but tuberculosis disease so to escape from that thought and the obsessed thought and the thought on death he visited his friend's house uh, his friend is charles amitage brown so he wrote he composed this poem uh, my heart aches and a drowsy numbness pains even that numbness pains avarude heart avlo vedane irundha unarchiye illada bhagam kuda avlo pain a irundha appdi solrar is there is there any uh, uh, liquid to forget all the past memories okay he was lamenting that cause okay that that he just wrote it later he says he just admire the beauty and the song of the bird he says in some melodious plot of beech and green see the bird is hiding itself among the green leaves and the bird is singing the song so the whole plot becomes melodious and the paadra edam athanayum melodiousa maariruchu and the bird eppadi paadudha it is not shouting like me it is how our uh, uh, how we teachers uh, we used to shout uh, we have to take lot of painful effort okay the throat pains but the bird is not like that sing us of the summer in full throated ease he says avlo alagama saralama paaduma in full throated ease says uh, john keats so that is also one of the chiseled poems in the hands of uh, john keats then uh, uh, just a few figures of speech i could tell you what is an alliteration the repetition of consonant sounds i have also taken from shakespeare's macbeth fowls fowl and fowl is fair fowl is fowl and fowl is fair power through yeah yeah okay for 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 so the repetition of consonant sounds then here also another example round the rock runs the river ra ra sound round the rock runs the river black buck big a big black bear ba 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 sound like this so this is what alliteration uh, then what is an assonance at the assonance is the repetition of vowel sound cow the bell back in back like this Oh, uh, here, ow, ow, gal, bell, ow, ow, back, ah, ah, back, black, like this. I could also quote from Edgar Allan Poe, uh, the familiar poet, uh, from his raven, 
once upon a midnight dreary while i pondered weak and weary over many a quaint of forgotten lore like this the poem goes cock the raven never more see in all the poetic lines we could see a oh, uh, repetition of the sound o oh, o oh, o oh. okay and the repetition of vowel sound o oh. here but in this line we could see dreary and weak we dreary right like that so from this raven assonance is used to buy edgar allan poe of course you all know metaphor and no need to explain it being the students of literature then uh, ah i would like to talk about shakespeare's all the worlds is stage and all the men and women merely players with all his entrance and existence sorry ah uh, entrance and exit with uh, one man of seven stages he says the first stage being in fact cooking in nurses arm used to warm it the mother as a nurse look after looks after the child the second stage being a school boy a whining school boy he compares the whining school boy to a snail how the snail moves slowly at sea for an uh, uh, for an hour the snail moves only 1 inch okay as for an hour the snail moves only 1 inch so like that the school boy will be hesitating to school but this time even in this time corona time also this pandemic period all the schools have been uh, locked down shut down the students are unwilling to go to school even now also even if they do not have online class they say like that then okay then the third stage being lover always singing awful ballad always singing sad songs uh, thinking about the lady love then the fourth stage uh, marriage of course but he does not talk about that then the fifth stage being soldier who wants to protect his nation his family then sixth stage old man the seventh stage old man that is what compared to second childhood ness sun teeth sun eyes sun taste and sun everything uh, we will sun means without it is derived from the latin term sun that's what la belle dame sun mercy also a beautiful lady without mercy that poem written by john keats the beautiful ballad also see that's what this philosophical poem we can understand this is one of the chiseled poems in the hands of shakespeare i have been running fast sorry then uh, one poem just the last line alone i shall read see there are many flowers in this earth oleander mulaipu jasmine okay uh, then marigold then uh, this it kanahambaram in english term we call korea uh, sorry what is it okay uh, i shall recollect it <laughs> see here uh, all these flowers are much useful all the flowers have positive energies positive aura only under flowers arali pu it has a power which reduces asthma disease mulai pu when you sniff the and the Uh, smell that perfume from the emanating from that flower which makes a peaceful state of mind then tasting the petals of red lotus also we will won't have white hair gray hair then plantain flower while i pu also decreases our heat uh, in the body innumerable positive energies around a few to mention few of flowers neem people lotus early under champa mango bilbam pumpkin parijata jasmine enthralling flowers the what want to sacrifice adorning this gigantic earth a little paradise see the earth seems to be a little paradise adorned with beautiful flowers fragrance of flowers a peerless price we can buy anything but we cannot buy air we cannot buy the fragrance of flowers it is a peerless price the earth's asset the earth asset let us all rise and praise the nature that's what the fragrance of flowers this is one of my poems then 
E comings, as you all know, one of the chiseled poems, the last stanza, somewhere I have never traveled gladly beyond. He says, I do not know what is this about you that closes and opens only something in me understands. The voice of I, your eyes is deeper than all roses. Nobody, not even the rain, has such small hands. Nobody, not even the rain, has such small hands, he says. Then uh, another, just a minute. Mm. Another quote from uh, Umar Kayam's. Actually, Umar Kayam is a Persian poet from Persia and uh, his poems were written in Persian language. Well, uh, later it was translated into English by Edward Fitzgerald. That's what we, I could read this translation. The moving finger writes, and having writ, moves on. Not all thy piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line. Not all thy tears wash out a word of it. The moving finger writes, what the poet conveys the message here means, he expresses the notion that whatever one does in this life, the moving finger writes, this life is in your hand and this life and the reflection of your own action, it is of your, from your own responsibility, it is all from your own action, he says, it cannot be changed. So moves on, the hand writes, not all thy piety, nor wit. It may be of virtuousness or wit, a knowledge, okay, shall lure it back to cancel. You cannot go back and you cannot erase whatever you have written. Uh, that is your own life he talks about. You cannot ever erase your past life history. Nor your tears can wash out even a word, uh, the past experience you have experienced. That's what a beautiful line chiseled from the hands of Umar Khayyam, the philosophical Persian poet. Then uh, quotes from Shakespeare, just I will complete it. Uh, but if the while I think the oh dear friend, all losses are restored and sorrows end. Whenever we think about our best friend, the best comrade, all losses, restore our sorrows must be ended. That's what Shakespeare says. Give every man the ear but few they voice. This is not from his poetic line, but his, but from his uh, Hamlet play, and that also continues, for thy apparel often proclaims the man. Give every man the ear, listen to every man's words, but few they voice. Pesra the korachitu, nalla listen pannega. Speeches, uh, speeches, Okay, I shall answer. Speech is golden, silent, sorry, speech is silver, silence is golden. That's what the proverb also says. Then next, he talks about the apparel in which we wear. For the apparel often proclaims a man. See, we people are judged by the way of dress in which we wear. This is one of the chiseled uh, points that poetic lines I have taken from this play. Then, um, see, the end of all reading literature is to become creative writer. My dear students, you must be a creative thinker as well as creative writer. Creative thinking is an invaluable skill for all the college students. Start writing either in Tamil or English. Please use this skill. Publish it in your own college magazine. Circulate it to your friends. Show it to your teachers. They will be um, admiring your poems. They will be wishing you a lot. 
the teachers are the only people in this world to see the achievement of the students it then the creative thinking also helps you to look at a lot of problems and situations from different perspective so just inculcate this creative thinking within yourself it may solve your problem in your life also then you can also solve all the problems even when you communicate with other people if you have creative thinking this power only you can communicate well and you must you will also have open mindedness just i shall end my speech by this oh, another quote also i have given okay i shall read a mind not to be changed by place or time the mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell a hell of heaven everything it is in your mind you can create heaven or hell it is in your mind heaven hell apdi ne engey poi theda theva illa ungalude manasile da irukku so wherever you are make a heaven of out of hell change that place by your own creative thought then i could end like this all is not lost the unconquerable will the unstudy of revenge immortal hate and the courage never to submit or yield though you have lost everything in your life don't lose your unconquerable will ungalukulla and the will power mattum ennaikume vittradinga you must have that unconquerable will that power of thought that mind that will power in your mind then i shall ask you a few questions before you ask me questions parvin bonu ma parvin bonu ma ah yes parvin bonu ma yeah i'm here i'm here first first of all i am very pleased to see your smiling smiling face first i would give give a review of your lecture yeah uh, you have brought uh, uh, nature before oh, yes. us and you have taken efforts to make each and every one a poet there was a divine touch in your speech and uh, you are, you have also given beauty tips to students okay so yeah Thank our uh, students and your students are very lucky to have a professor like you so it was a great treat to both eyes and ears thank you so much uh, rati ma Yes, ma'am. Now, uh, would you like to ask questions? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, please, please switch on your uh, audio, ma'am. Can I ask a few questions to my dear students of AMG Yadava College? Ah, okay. Yes, students, you shall unmute and uh, answer the questions. You can uh, switch on your video also. Uh, is my voice audible, ma'am? Ah, uh, yes, it's audible, ma'am. Is my voice? Ah, uh, yes. Unmute and answer. Ah. Uh. What is the longest uh, uh, students? One of you, please answer, ma. This is to kindle fire in the universe. Okay, competitive and the test. Okay, what is the longest old English poem? What is the longest old English poem? Yes, students, you may answer. Girls, you can also post in the chat box. You can also give your answers in the chat box, girls. Ma'am, I think uh, students could not read. Do you wish, ma'am? Tell me. You can come again. Yes, ma'am. Beowulf, ma'am. Ma'am, she says Beowulf.
Okay, no problem. I shall answer. Be wolf. Okay, this is the longest early English poem. And who is the author of what mark? Geoffrey yes. Chaucer. Prophet Chaucer. What mark? Geoffrey Chaucer. Chaucer, ma'am. Be wolf. Very good. Very good. Ah, yes, I appreciate. The the second question. Who is called the author of the poem? Ma'am. Civil question. Who is called the father of the poem? Jeffrey Chaucer, Jeffrey Chaucer, ma'am. Jeffrey Chaucer, ma'am. Jeffrey Chaucer, okay. Very good, ma'am. I appreciate. I want to reach the first sentence of each line, spell a word, and that is called. Jeffrey Chaucer is the answer to the second question. Third question, ma'am. Ah, yes, ma'am. Very good. Avoid. Third. Question. A boy in which the first letter of each line spell a word. What is it called? I, I shall change the slide. Okay, after a minute. Why did he not use capital letters in his works? He will not use capital letters in his poems. The American poet. I have also taken a quote from his poem. Name of the poet? Mm. Cummings, ma'am. Okay. Which poet did not use capital letters in his works? Very good. E. Cummings. Okay. And in Indian English literature, there is an Indian English poet, a woman poet of modernized literature. She also does not use capital letters in his poems. And who is she? Do you know? She is a contemporary writer who always voice for the marginalized people. Tamil poets, Tamil English poets. Who is she? Okay, I shall answer. Meena Kandasam. Have you got it, ma? Yes, ma'am. Meena Kandasamy. She does not use capital letters. Okay. Then the last question, which is the shortest poem? You will be shocked to know the answer. Look at this. A writer by name Aram Saroyan. He wrote this poem. One word poem. Lights. L I G H G H T lies this one word poem, and also he has written another poem. Mm. Ma, the four legged version of the letter, only one letter poem comprising a four legged version. Mm. It has a lot of meaning, Om, mm, like that. In all the chanting mantras, whatever the religion may be, either it is. Uh, Islamic or Hindu or Christianity, this mm, play a vital role while chanting mantras, and it is also mentioned in Guinness record written by Aram Sorai. Okay, thank you, students. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Yes, uh, students, if you have any doubts, you can uh, get your doubts cleared. Now it's your time to ask questions. You can uh, clear your doubts with the resource person. Your questions are welcome. Good afternoon, mom. Mom, first of all, it was a very wonderful session, Mom. It was very useful, and uh, all the pieces of poem. Mom? Continue, Pa. Continue. Yes, Mom. Uh, I have already written uh, two to three poems. I just have a question. Do you have any tips for uh, a better uh, writing, Mom? So I just want to know if there is some tips you could give. Thank 
Okay. Uh, inspiration plays a vital role in creativity. What you must do means uh, listen to music for at least 30 minutes a day. Whatever the music you love. And the beat song or melody song, really it may kindle that fire within you. Adu ungal kulla, edo vane yelladhenge yelladhenge ansolla, the laptop, laptop, the heartbeat, beat order, sound order, it makes you to write, um, pray to God well, because God within us only blesses us a lot. You just pray God and whatever you have it in your mind, always carry a notebook and pen wherever you go. I used to go wherever I go with the notebook and pen. One line, you just write one poem or two poem. It may take even for completing a poem one week or one month. You just write it, write, write, write on. Yes, Spend your time with Thanks. the nature. Uh, yes, this nature will bless you a lot. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, could you share your favorite poem, ma'am? My favorite poem, ma'am. Poetry. Oh. <laughs> My favorite poetry, this is this is what my favorite poetry, Crown of Man. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Ah, yes, ma'am. I will send Definitely you this now, okay? Yes. Definitely, ma'am. Ma'am, how can I become a creative uh, writer please. without imitating when I start to write without, something new, without um, imitating others, first, words, we cannot write something new. Whatever it is said, we can. Uh, every all literature in the world, this like um, old wine in new bottle. Okay, old wine in a new bottle. That's what we cannot write something new, but we can arrange the words in a creative way. Matta unga sonna da yu solla la different arrange paneer kano unga words it should be ordered arranged in different ways. You cannot copy from others poetry but you read, reread and think and just rewrite for a poem a read panna bodhu adhi lines a use panna ha what is in your thought? Okay, again and again you write and you use different vocabularies instead of that vocabulary said by the poet. Okay, ma'am? Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, sir, students. Yes. Good afternoon, ma'am. Jaya Rakshana, you may continue. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma 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 okay. First, I would like to thank you, ma'am. You explained a lot about creativity and poetry in detail and made it easier for me to understand, ma'am. I so much believe uh, that all I have learned from you will surely be beneficial as I uh, continue to the next phase of my career, ma'am. And one oh, more thing, so ma'am. Hopefully yes, you have uh, such a great uh, tone, ma'am. And I just <laughs> want to express my gratitude for your invaluable guidance, encouragement, and most especially for devoting a substantial time for us, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. Jaya Lakshana. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, pa. Good afternoon, ma'am. Thank you for giving a wonderful session, ma'am. I have learned uh, a lot yeah. from your session, ma'am, and I have improved how to pronunciation from you, ma'am. Then your vocal is very, very, very nice, ma'am, and your sing singing also it's <laughs> nice, ma'am. You have many talents to express, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. For uh, we have learned many things from you, ma'am, and I I learned Thank how to create so a poem. Uh, but uh, in any field, it's very useful for me, ma'am. Thank you for your wonderful uh, and uh, 
you have take the many times uh, you have spent many times for us ma'am thanks for that uh, ma'am thank you ma'am ma'am i think ah, you have you. got many fan followers from our college <laughs> oh my god <laughs> because of parvin banu ma'am who invited me <laughs> thank you for organizing such wonderful webinar ma'am uh, uh, okay ma'am we must be thankful to you ma'am Okay, any other student, you if you wish to give feedback, you shall give. Hi, ma'am. Yeah, Jessie, ma'am, you shall you shall start. Good afternoon, Gadi, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Thank you so much Please. for this valuable session. She is a second PG student, ma'am. The oh, second PG student. Thank you, but thank you, ma'am. First of all, uh, you started with the uh, poetry, the definition of poetry uh, from that Greek yes, word, yes. and uh, you started to uh, explain the term of poetry by comparing with the poets in literature, by like William Wordsworth, Emily Dickinson, Robert Frost. and uh, etc and um, yeah, it is true that uh, poetry is the crown of literature ma'am because i love poetry and i love yes, to write yes. poems and uh, i have written uh, many poems uh, uh, in thought of my own uh, subconscious mind <laughs> i have written many poems and uh, uh, it is not only in the uh, happy happiest situation we we are, we are going to write yes, a poem yes. it is also in the moment of grief we will be right sad poem. thoughts because, yes ma'am because uh, uh, my own experience is that uh, yeah, it may be a happiest situation or it may be a grief situation i used to write because when when i start to write i feel relaxed uh, i feel that i have some talent to write uh, like that i feel ma'am yes 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 uh, whenever um, we write something else and the burden of our heart will be that we will be relieved from that burden of yes, something else we have yes. experienced bitter experiences yes, at yes, least for that reason we must take a pen and write daily you write daily at yes. least two poetic lines you write ma i pray to yes. god that all the students of uh, the other work college must become poets one day notable poets sure ma okay <laughs> Ma'am, and okay. also you explain Thank how you. to read uh, the poetry in between the lines. We have to read simply reading the lines yes, of the poetry with the correct pronunciation is not a matter. Uh, in depth uh, reading is essential for a poem to understand and apply it in our life, ma'am. You explained it in a very good manner, ma'am. Uh, and uh, yeah, your one of your poems you you read for us and uh, you explained that poem that uh, one single line I really loved, ma'am. apply truth on lips the best lipstick yes, in the yes, world yes, yes ma'am it's true Thank ma'am uh, wherever you go we have to speak the truth uh, it is the best lipstick ma'am so i loved that line from your poem ma'am <laughs> thank you so much for that poem thank ma'am and um, thank you, you explain the uh, poetic line uh, from john keats uh, poem Uh, that is heard melodies are sweet uh, but those unheard are sweeter uh, often i used to see this uh, quote in many of my um, friends uh, status or something i i find this yes, line yes, uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes ma'am so uh, i i could feel that lines in my heart ma'am and uh, you also sang a song for us and uh, your voice was so clear pristine it was awesome ma'am Uh, and uh, you have the Thank tone you. to explain uh, the feelings of the poet and uh, to attract the students to your voice and the explanation <laughs> and um, i i see god that, god, uh, god in all human beings that's what i could see god in everyone yes ma'am yes, ma definitely ma'am thank you ma'am okay. and uh, in the thank end you, you concluded with uh, heaven and hell is in your mind it's absolutely true from the john milton's uh, words ma'am 
heaven is also in our mind hell is also in our mind how we make our surroundings happy uh, how we make it uh, uh, comfortable zone, how we make it in a comfortable zone matters a lot ma'am and thank you so much for spending your valuable time for us ma'am uh, we wish to see you soon in our college also ma'am in the <laughs> pandemic gets over uh, we, we wish to see in your in your live session ma'am thank you so much ma'am thank you pa thank you we will meet later sure ma'am yes thank you jessi ma thank you ma'am Good afternoon, ma'am. I'm Yalini from Good Second afternoon. PG, ma'am. Um, okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for your fabulous speech, ma'am. Uh, it is indeed a heaven-sent opportunity for all of us to know more about poetry, ma'am. And uh, uh, it is really interesting to hear the beautiful words of great people about poetry, followed by your description, ma'am, and the way you uh, explain. the famous poetic lines is exceptional ma'am and i love the way you segregate everything like uh, the characteristics of poetry the significance of poetry the poetic elements and the poetic devices is enthralling ma'am and i love your singing voice ma'am it is too good and it is ear pleasing ma'am and you made our hearts overwhelmed with love for poetry ma'am on the whole your speech is enthralling and thought provoking ma'am thank you ma'am Thank you, but thank you. Yes, thank you, Yalini. Yes, uh, we have come to the final uh, part of this wonderful session. Uh, now I call upon uh, Miss uh, R. Haridharani uh, to deliver uh, vote of thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. I am glad to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of Phoenix Literary Association of the English Department. I express my gratitude to our secretary and correspondent, Thirumadi E M G S Indrani Amma, and our president, Thiru E M G S Poti Raja Sir, and our governing council members, Thiru E M G S Poti Gopala Krishnan. Sir and the EMGS Arun Kothi, sir, for their support. I would like to thank our principal, Dr. Mrs. B. Puspalata, ma'am, for for motivating us. I thank our head of depa department, Mrs. Sivagama Sundari, ma'am, for giving this opportunity to organize this event. I also like to place my note of thanks to Director R. Divya, ma'am. Administrative Officer Mr. V M Sundaraja, Sir, our Dean of Academic Affairs, Dr. Indra Rani Amma, Indra Rani Ma'am, and our Controller Examinations, Mrs. C Kamala Ma'am. I express my sincere th th thanks to Dr. V P Rai Radhi Ma'am, Assistant Professor of English, Manner Thirumalai Aikar College, Atanamas Madurai. Ma'am, your deepest love for literature is uh, obviously revealed from our presentation. Your speech shows you are the keen observer of nature. Your speech kindles the passion for writing poems in our students. Those words are really touching, chiseled marble of language. Thank you, ma'am. My sincere thanks to all the faculty members of the of the department. and student of our department of our patients participants and interaction thank you thank you anada yes thank you ma'am now uh, please switch on your videos participants please switch on your videos for a photo shoot
Yes, uh, thank you all. We all had a nice time. Yes. Uh, uh, waiting to meet you soon, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Thank you all. We shall wind up the session. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Parvind, what about? Thank Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, girls. You can leave the meeting.